Hey everyone, I'm Steph, and today I had this plan of going live with my phone to do a tour of... <laughs> Michael's in the chat. I, I wanted to go and do a tour of all the games that I have here with my phone, but because my phone is not seeming to work for that purpose, I guess I will have to figure out how to do that, and... Usually there is just, there's this button on the app that says go live. And then so I did that. I put in a title and I did all that. And then I hit live and it would go live for like half a second, but there's no image of me. There's no, the camera wasn't re reading or something. So clearly I have some setting or something that's not reaching out. It looks so grainy. I don't know why it looks so grainy, but um, I don't know. Does it look bad on your end, Michael? If I sit back here. Anyway, I want I want it to be a good stream. Uh, so this was kind of a last second. Derek, what's up? A last second um, put together on my 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 laptop here. I want to play Calico after that, so I have everything set up, sort of, for Calico. <laughs> I have everything set up in here for Calico. That's why it says all the games with Steph Calico. Uh, but it should say Steph's hodgepodge of gaming uh, for what's today? Uh, October 9th, 2020. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit grainy. I ugh. Maybe I have too much light, too much light pollution. <laughs> Alexa, turn off black lamp. No, she doesn't listen to me. She never listens to me. Alexa, turn off black lamp. Eh, it's probably too dark now. Ah, uh, everything just got ruined. You know, it's been that kind of week. Oh, there it goes. It went back on. Darkness ca typically causes grease. Yeah, but so does uh, light pollution, it seems. So hopefully it's better. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Mike, Michael could turn it on from upstairs with his voice. <laughs> uh, it's just been that kind of week where everything goes wrong. What is up with that? Yeah, she does listen to you. That, you know, that robot chick we have. <laughs> yeah, she does. It's true. It's true. Uh, <laughs> lots of cool things going on. My Kickstarter calendar. Steph's Awesome Gaming Calendar 2021. You know you want it. <laughs> you know you want it. You know you want it. It's beautiful. I let all the backers know that I that I appreciate them today and uh, that they should join in on this hodgepodge. So if you're here because of that, thank you very much for joining in. I I will still... I'll see if I can like maybe carry my laptop around and... <laughs> I don't know. Do a tour. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I might just have to take pictures. That might just be the easiest thing. I am good at pictures. Uh, I was all ready to show off my pile of boxes. Like, the box pile is, like, incredibly large. And I, uh, I gotta sell some games. That's basically, uh, what's going on. Oh, yeah. Tour next week. Yeah, I, need I don't know why my phone didn't work. I am so mad right now. I'm so mad. It says go live, and then I put in all the information, blah, 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 and then I hit the button, and it says it's going, 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 zero viewers, zero viewers, and it's a black screen. I'm like, uh, it shouldn't be this difficult. <laughs> Apparently it is. The things I learned, the things I learned. Um, so I have a lot of games that I, that I discussed this week in the blog, like a billion games. One billion games! Uh, <laughs> And uh, a lot of great games uh, that I got to try out and I'm going to show off in coming up streams, you know, with Michael. We'll play through a couple games and and then you should see that the pile of games I got this week is like blank blank. It's as Michael likes to sing every time we get a new box, one game, uh, one game played, 20 games in. <laughs> Two games out, one game in. It's a, the, the amount of games coming in is not equal at all to the games that I'm getting played. <laughs> I need to play more games. But I'm, you know what? It's already October 9th, right? And I've learned over 20 
games already this month. That's insane. And I just keep getting more games, more games. Play one game, get two more. Play one game, get three more. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, nothing has worked this week. It's like, this week is cursed or something. It must be October with all of the curses going around, right? Right? I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm so excited to do a tour. And I'm just like, no! Welcome, Dutch Yoda. Welcome, welcome. So, uh, I want to talk about the games that I got to play. On Monday, I wrote about some pretty cool games. We we wrote about, well, I, I wrote about and we played through the Princess Bride Adventure book game. And th this game is, um, if you are a fan of Princess Bride, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, I haven't seen it in like 20 years or something, maybe 15 to 20 years ago. I watched it for the first time, one and only time I've seen it. And I liked it well enough. I know it's like a cult classic. I gotta show off my wolf shirt. Uh, I know it's like a cult classic. People love that movie. Michael loves this movie. He was quoting it the whole time we were playing the game. And so in the game, there's all these little quotes all over the place. And so you definitely will, like, love that. There, It gives you that very thematic feeling. Uh, so... We actually played this game while watching the movie. And as you play the game, you're going to flip the, the book and play a new game each time you turn the page. And each page is a new location, uh, a new challenge to overcome. You're, you're basically playing out the movie in this game. So it's it's fairly light. It's cooperative. And um, you're going to have a good time because, you know, you can play. You can watch the movie as you play. And the, that's what we did. We paused it to catch up with the game or we're playing through the game and the movie's going and Michael's quoting the whole thing as we were playing. And, and so we definitely want to play this on the live stream uh, and show it off a little bit. Maybe we'll play one or two chapters uh, of the six chapter book. We don't want to like reveal all of it, but we could. I mean, the game plays out, you could play all of the rounds in maybe an hour and a half. So basically the time it takes to watch the movie. Um, inconceivable. I've never seen the movie. Yeah, I mean, so you could play the, you could play the game and watch the movie and get familiar. I mean, if, if you know somebody who would like The Princess Bride, um, I definitely think this is one of the better Princess Bride games out there that, I, that I've heard people say. So um, I, I enjoyed it, and I would definitely play it again. I'd want to play it again. Um, it's only 90 minutes. Yeah, the movie The movie itself is like... What is it? No, it's like... Yeah, the movie is not very long. I don't think it's 90 minutes. It's over 90 minutes, but I don't think it's very long. At least it didn't feel very long. We were playing. We ended up losing one of the levels, so we had to play replay that. We had it on pause. It was like stop and go. So you probably play the game in a couple hours, and the movie is about that long. Whatever. I, 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 it's, <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention to how long the movie was. Yeah, there you go. The movie is 90 minutes. I, and, like, the movie is very short, um, and, it, and you can play the game in that length. So every chapter it says 15 minutes so you you can easily play a chapter in like 20 minutes and you know you'll either win or lose depending on the cards that you're given and, and all that stuff and so you're dealing with the kid interrupting and everything which fred savage i love fred savage so that was good <laughs> cut out credits and that's like 90 ish there you go <laughs> Stray has all the information <laughs> uh so well hopefully if we can play that this on the live stream this weekend, that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Michael's like, no live stream this week. I'm like, oh, but we got to play. We have, to open it. We have a pile of games to play. So we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully we'll play that this weekend. Um, another game where we're, uh, we got to try out, and then we ended up playing on the live stream with everybody last Sunday was Story Tailors. This was so much fun. We had so much fun on the live stream. Uh, we had people involved in voting on which animal they thought would be best for a situation. So the game is very light. It's a kid's game where you're basically crea crafting the story, and you're tailoring the story. So there's a story. Michael read it in his awesome voices, and every every time the, the storybook changes, it's going to highlight a descriptive character. And so as the game plays out, uh, players will be picking cards from their hand of different animals that 
maybe fit this description and then and then everybody collectively votes on the character that they think should be that character in the story we are crafting or tailoring and so um we had the live stream all vote on the different characters and we had a good time with that so uh it was actually very interactive and fun to play with the live stream the other day and uh, it's great for, it would be great for like a, um, for like a, like a classroom or, you know, just bedtime story for kids. I, th I think it's really, it's really, it has a place and I think it's really well done, great art and everything like that. Um, so let's see. It, then Michael and, I, Michael and I played Infinity Gauntlet. Now this is a new take on a on the love letter system where you have a, like a couple cards in hand. You're gonna play one and try and like take out the other guy. In, in this case, you're taking out the other guy. So you're trying to uh, issue like hit points, if you will. Uh, you know the, the the good guys versus Thanos, and Thanos is just trying to get his you know rainbow rings on the table as fast as he can. He's very strong, so you have to kind of sneak attack him to try and take those points away. And uh, you know he might run out of cards. If he does, then you know that's good. Uh, so, but you're trying to knock his life down, and, and it is actually fairly good. It was better than the normal love letter, I would say. I like obviously I like the theme and. Getting to play Captain America is always fun. <laughs> it's always fun. Thanos for the win. Yeah, Michael kicked my butt. The heck. Uh, then we played Firefly Dance. Oh my god, this game is so cute! Michael's like, I'm never playing this game again. It's a memory type game, and it's very, it's super light. It's a kid's game, but it's so cute because the little fireflies actually light up. You, like, put the little wand on them, and, and then their little butt lights up with the color. Um, so you, you have to give the wand a little juice with some batteries, but once you do, you roll, you roll a die, you move the little witch fairy lady along, and you're gonna have to, she's gonna land on a green space, so you have to point out the green firefly. And if you do, awesome, you get a gem. And then you'll switch that green firefly with some other firefly on the board. So all, all, all the while, all these fireflies are moving around. You might roll a card. So if you, if you roll the card on the die, you're gonna reveal a card, and you're gonna have to answer these fireflies in these order and if you do you get bonus points and you're going to move basically all the fireflies around again just mixing them up crazy and so your your whole goal is just to try and remember all these things so obviously kids are very good at memory and so they'll remember where all this these fireflies are uh these order yeah you know whatever don't make fun of me i have a lot of thoughts in my mind this is why my blog is a mess <laughs> I'm not the best writer. I'm not the best speaker. I just have a lot of energy and love games. <laughs> uh, I'm possible. It's impossible. Don't worry about me. You do you. Don't worry about me. Oh my goodness. What else? Um, hey, I kicked your butt in that Firefly game. My memory is very good. I didn't say it was good in English. I said it was good in uh, this memory Firefly game. <laughs> we played Dungeon Drop. If you're not familiar with this game, it's uh, tons of cubes. It's like an explosion of cubes. And you're going to drop all these cubes on the table. And apparently this is going to Kickstarter really soon with walls. So uh, you can kickstart the game and include walls, which I think is a much needed mini expansion thing that they're going to add because it will create a barrier for these cubes to land versus just having them go all over the place. And if you buy this game used, you want to definitely make sure that they do a full count of the cubes because they are likely missing cubes because these cubes literally go everywhere. And you're trying to create like a triangular... Um, section of the of the dungeon that you've created with these cubes and in that section with pillars you're going to collect all the cubes and so you're trying to collect gems and treasures but you might also encounter trolls and other monsters that will issue uh, damage to you so you, you everybody everybody has their character ability and a special like um class that they have ability so you can choose to use one of these abilities each round and it's really cute um I really love the art. I think it's, you know, I think it's all around a cute game and a cute little small, like, cube box, which is fun. Um, 
But yeah, Michael said everywhere. Yeah, these cubes literally everywhere. Like so, like you're gonna drop them and then they just go. So you either have to, you either want to create your own borders or you know just keep an eye <laughs> on what you're doing because cubes will be found for weeks later. I'm sure. Uh, down, down, down. Facebook is down, down, down. I don't, I don't know what that means. Hopefully that doesn't apply to me right now, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to keep going. Okay. So we also played on the live stream fast forward fear, fast forward fear. And this is an amazing, fun little card game where you're working through a deck of cards and you're, you're trying to win the round by having the most point of cards in your hand at the end of the, at the end of the round. Um, and the, the end of the round will be triggered once on the tableau there's a a like value that is reached or rather exceeded and that person will be out and then everybody else will evaluate their hand of cards for the most value they will win um and so with two players you're either gonna win or you're lose and so michael totally kicked my butt this time uh we <laughs> uh, i did not do very well i think he won like four out of five rounds or something. I won like one or two rounds. It was like not great. We didn't make it through the whole deck, so I was gonna have a comeback. I was gonna have a comeback. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, oh, Wednesday was Pandemic Legacy Season Zero! <gasps> I reviewed the Pandemic Legacy Season Zero prologue game only. Uh, so there was no spoilers and everybody could join in and just read that. But then that night, we played it straight through. Just the prologue game. Don't worry, just the prologue game. We explained it. Rob Davio even joined in on the chat, which was really cool. He's like, I don't remember any of this game. Because <laughs> at one point I was like, why didn't you tell us, Rob? Because we forgot about it. He's like, I don't know. I don't remember this game. It was like 18 months ago that I played this. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know his games. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Um, you know, he's already working on the next best, best thing, I'm sure. But it was really cool to have him in the chat. And uh, we we managed to succeed at the, the prologue game, which was good. We were really close to not succeeding. I mean, we were down to, like, just a few agents left that needed to be placed. And we would have just lost. So we got so super crazy uh close at the end but it was it was a nail biter for sure and that night we had a ton of technical problems so i just i felt so bad because we didn't have like our overhead working we didn't have anything working and it's just been that kind of week it seems so um hopefully we get that all back and running um uh, getting a few cool tools to help with that going forward uh so i'm i'm hopeful you know once those show up that everything just works perfectly you know like It'll just work perfectly, right? 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 <laughs> Your adapter has arrived. Excellent. I haven't looked outside in like an hour, so <laughs> you know, every time I look out the front door, I'm like, "Oh, a box! Oh, a box! Oh, a box!" <laughs> this time, it's an adapter. Excellent. Oh, oh yeah, she's the all-knowing. She's very all-knowing. All-knowing Alexa knows everything. All-knowing. Um, so that was super fun. We got to play Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. We're still deciding if we're going to play the full game on this Twitch channel. Maybe once everything's up and running. It won't be this week, but maybe next week we'll run through, um, a full campaign of it. I really want to play it. I know people want to see it being played, so... I know a lot of people don't want to see it being played, so I also know that. So there'll be big spoiler tags, like plastered everywhere i'm maybe even behind us will be like spoiler <laughs> it's like just put you know put it right there spoiler <laughs> um you also won a game of name that pixelated box cover thursday this is correct last night on the bgg uh tv stream uh <laughs> they were just playing around with this little pixel like gadget type thing that you can you, know, you can make a pixelized clock or something in little like gifs and stuff in a pixelated form and so lincoln decided he was gonna start taking pictures of like all the game covers and i was just like i know it 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 
<laughs> and I got them all. So obviously I'm not going to be invited to play that again because I, I'm a spoiler of fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. What else? Oh, I got this like long list of games. I played Unfair. We played that on the live stream and then I talked about the expansion. There's four new themes in this new expansion for Unfair. So if you're familiar with the Unfair game, I think you'll really obviously like the new themes because having more of more of this game is obviously better in my opinion. But I I already like the game. We played with dinosaurs, we played with B movies and I got to score for panoramas and dinosaurs. Who doesn't like to score for dinosaurs? Oh, here it is, guys. Here it is. Michael went to the front door and found it. So this is hopefully going to get my second camera up and running perfectly. This is the goal. This is the goal. I really hope so. Just so many problems, people. You don't even know. Boop, boop. Uh, we played Kingswood. Kingswood is a light action selection type of game. Uh, there are going to be these, like, villager guys on these spaces, and there's going to be a knight on a space. And each turn, you're going to choose one of these villager guys, adventurers, and take that action where he's located. And then you're going to move him to an empty space and take that action as well. Uh, some of the actions will be like collecting resources or going to the forest to fight the monsters. And then you're going to use your resources and, um, and fight the monsters. It's very light. I do want to play it, uh, on the live stream. It's, it's super fast. I mean, it will be played wicked fast. And, you know, during the Essen week, be before Essen Spiel, I want to, like, kind of live stream as much as possible if Michael has the... <laughs> The capability just to, like, sit and plow through a bunch of games one day. Maybe we can just, like, say, oh, this game and then this game and then this game. Because we have all these light games that I got to try out. Like, the Firefly game. I know he doesn't want to play that one. But, you know, there's, like, Mind Deeper and stuff like that. All these other games that are 10 to 15, 30 minute long games that, you know, doesn't necessarily need a night of gaming because we can play through them all really quickly. So I want to try and show off as many Essen games as possible that I've already played. Um, Michael writes, um, so we think we found out why multiple webcams won't work on streaming. We need to be on separate USB root hubs. And so, yeah, this is the, this was, is the main problem. And so, Hopefully, by having this um, USB-C root hub, we can plug in the other camera so they each camera can be recognized individually and then they don't clash when we put them into OBS and this and that and all these things. Because my this is just a laptop. Upstairs, it worked for Michael fine where all the cameras were uh, working. And so, clearly, the laptop, something is going on. Something is funny. Root hubs in the inter I don't know. I don't know these terminologies. Michael's like, yeah, you're wrong. And I'm like, okay. I don't know. I'm just trying to explain it to the best of my knowledge, which is not very much. I don't know much about computers at all. I'm surprised I even know how to run OBS. I've done extensive research on how to run OBS. There's a lot of little nitty gritty things going on with this. Um... Michael's like, but I'm hoping the USB-C port and the USB normal port are on separate USB root hubs. Anyway. <laughs> All these things. I don't know. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> we played a game called Monster Dentist. So, uh, just be thankful that your dentist is not a monster. And you'll be good. But it's a really, really cute uh, monster themed game. Actually, that would be good for Halloween. There's monsters. They're, they're really cute monsters. And going to the dentist is always horrifying, right? Um, so yeah, there's going to be this card underneath. And there's two, like, standees of monsters. And each player puts their little, like, mirror, their dental tool, the mirror. You know the one with the little round uh, mirror that you have the long, like, stick that you can see deep into your mouth, basically. And so that's what we're doing. We're looking underneath using that mirror to see the teeth inside this monster and we're trying to mimic it 
as fast as possible. So it's a speed game to pattern recognize the, the teeth. So what color teeth are they run and all these different things, these, uh, these things that are in their mouth. And so you have only a limited number of teeth, but all the teeth are double-sided and they mix and match the sides. So everything will be able to be placed. It's just how fast can you find that pattern? Um, it's really cute. It's really, really cute. Um, really fast, really cute. We played SpongeBob SquarePants Plankton Rising. And this is one Derek wanted me to play. And hopefully we are playing it this weekend on the live stream. Provided everything's up and running and everything's perfect in a perfect world. This is this is my plan is to play. Plankton Rising. Um it's really great if you've played any of the other Rising games, like Thanos Rising or Death Eater Rising. It has a similar feeling. This one definitely seems more family-friendly. The artwork is obviously SpongeBob and colorful and bright, and, you know, it's it's not like a dark theme at all. So it, it it's very welcoming, and players are working together. The dice are still really hateful, and they hate you, so you just got to watch out for those dice. Maybe you'll get a better... Um, display of card friends and stuff at the beginning of the game. We didn't find many friends until later in the game. And by then we were already like so weak on our dice pool that it was like so hard to maintain. So we ended up losing the recipe to, to the Krabby Patty in our game. But hopefully we'll do better on the live stream when we play it. Um, it it's really cute. It's really cute. Maybe Michael will sing. <laughs> Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Sad trombone. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him. But he, he's upstairs. He just yelled. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Okay, so today's blog. Today's blog, I had a bunch of different games. We played uh, Tales of Evil. I, ha I had hope for this one. Um, it's a basically like a choose your own adventure type thing where you're, you're choosing to go into different rooms and encounter different things that are happening in these rooms. It's all haunted. Uh, a lot of the theme is based, ooh, the mail ladies here. Mail time, mail time, mail time. <laughs> that's a different, that's a different, okay. Here comes Michael, run, 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 run. Um, I'll keep going. But, so Tales of Evil is, um, a cooperative experience where players are trying to work together in order to, um, I don't really know, find treasures, escape the, the mansion. I don't even really know. What Who could that be? Mail time. Mail time. One game played, two, two games. games. <laughs> no, play one game, get two more. Play one game and get three more. <laughs> <laughs> this is an everyday, everyday occurrence. It's, it's like it's like Christmas every day here. It's Christmas every day. Um, so I don't even really know what the goal of the, the, the Tales of Evil. I think you're just trying to win. <laughs> don't die. <laughs> Which we did. Of course we died. I do think it's, I think the components are cool. I think a lot of like the production value is cool. The, the, the whole concept of this game is cool. I just think it's it's hard to scribble town. We're gonna scribble some things. No, put it on my stack. I have to show it up. I don't even know what. Well, add it to the, the stack of a thousand games in front of me. That's just one of the three stacks. That's another one. That's one more. <laughs> It's hard to keep track. Play one game, get two more. So, Tales of Evil, I think there's a lot of good things going on. Um, I'm going to drink. Um, but there, it, it doesn't really have a good flow. You don't really know how what you're doing. Um, it doesn't explain, like, the actual, like, step one, step two, step three. You just kind of... Uh, over overall explains um the mechanics so like when you do this you do this uh but even still it's not clear sometimes on like 
can you get more than your maximum? Like, you start with, like, maybe three health. Can you get more than three health as you go? It doesn't state that until, like, the end of the game where it's like, oh, yeah, don't forget this. And you're like, well, we just literally played the whole prologue game. Why, did, why didn't you put that in, like, the rules? Like, <laughs> like it should have been in the rules. So uh, things are there, but they're kind of, like, out of order. And, and it's, it was hard to interpretate what's going on in that game. Uh, we had to reference the the forums a whole lot. I had to, you know, converse with the designer a whole lot and be like, what did you mean by this? What did you mean by this? Are we playing this right? Yeah, a lot of it seemed a bit forced. So th while I think there's the, some cool ideas going on, it just, um, yeah. Tales of, Yeah. But I took some good pictures of it, and I love that the box is glow-in-the-dark. I love that the dice are glow-in-the-dark, because how often do you get glow-in-the-dark dice? I love that. Uh, yeah, I wanted to like it, too. Uh, what else? Oh! I talked about a game I played solo on the live stream last Sunday, which was Cristallo. Uh, this is so much fun. I, I, I really... It's probably moved right up on my favorite solo game just because it's so puzzly. Uh, it was really fun to play on the live stream because everybody was helping me, so I did really well. <laughs> uh, so thanks for your help if you helped out with that. Uh, it's puzzly. You're trying to, like, match gems and collect different orbs, which are these to unleash the characters because they're all captured and you're trying to unleash them. So there's, like, kind of two phases in the game. So there's that phase where you're unleashing these, these characters. Any cards you have left over will get added to the card stack you set aside at the beginning of the game, and that will help defeat the dragon. So in phase two, you're using those cards to try and... Um, collect one of each gem and defeat the dragon and so it's it, it's all very cool it's very abstract and um i really really liked it <laughs> if you live near chernobyl hall of dice glow uh that's probably true thanks for that <laughs> um yeah, so Cristallo, I, I look forward to playing this again. BGD team has been loving it. They've been playing it on their live stream a whole lot. So if, if you have if you missed my channel, uh, I'm sure that BGD will keep playing it, you know, whenever they're like, we don't want to end, but we're going to keep going kind of thing. They'll just play, let's play Cristallo. And so, yeah, that, that was, it's been a lot of fun. On Wednesday, we got to play Horrified. Oh, I love Horrified. It's so fun. Um... We have all these little cool Funko minis which make the game a thousand times better. I don't know why it does, but it just does. I guess that's why people like miniatures. Uh, they're like, it makes the game a thousand times So I'm not like a ch a atta attached to miniatures or anything. But when they're actually like really cool Funko minis that actually like are the character, I, I don't know. I think they're really cool. Um, so we got to play that. So check that out um, in, in honor of October month. So... That was so much fun. Uh, what else did I play? Okay, so I also got to try uh, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. And here worked, uh, it was rough. It was kind of a rough going. So this was all done on the Man vs. Meeple channel. So you can go catch the live stream of it, um, which was, when was that? That was on Tuesday. Uh, Brian Lewis, the designer, was teaching us how to play. It's on TTS, but not really well implemented at all. So we were actually drawing and using our own printout sheets in front of us. And then we were using the components in TTS to like roll dice and activate different locations and look at cards and stuff. Um, so it was, Brian was not really a great explainer of the game I would have thought he would be a little bit better having played it just once I know I could do a better job teaching the game maybe he's a little too close to the game or maybe he thinks we automatically assume things but during that playthrough I was asking like a thousand questions I am like I didn't understand anything and clearly Kira didn't either because halfway through the game Kira's like well I didn't actually build buildings this way I'm like they're literally a pattern on the board. And then we literally asked this question, but she was trying to run everything, the stream and everything. But so she kept coming up with these little like phrases like she didn't understand. But all these questions I had already asked. So it was like, 
she wasn't listening, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I was just like, <laughs> I don't know. I, was just, I mean, the game is super fun. And so it's just, it was not the best showing of this game because they weren't ready for it. They just weren't ready to demonstrate this game. Um, I think the game is ready to be demoed. However, it's not ready on TTS. It's not ready on Tabletopia. And so it was very awkward to play via a live stream like this. Uh, so, but we muddled through and it took a couple hours. But we, you know, the game shouldn't take two hours. It'll probably in the end take one hour going forward. Uh, I, I almost directly compare it to Welcome to Dino World. But I like the this Roar and Write game a lot, a lot more. Um, I think it's more streamlined. It's much more easy to understand what's going on and, you know, building roads and excitement levels and threat levels and all these things is, is very, is very nice. I like what you're doing with the dice. So, um, I, I am excited for this game. It's on Kickstarter right now and I, I'm excited for it. I just, I think that they weren't quite ready for this demo to actually happen, um, Why is dinosaur asterisks? That oh yeah, I don't know. There was a thing. Dinosaurs is like some I don't know. Somebody else was saying that. Uh, also, awesome channel points is super fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for joining in. Yeah. Adam Apple Games. Uh, I haven't played um, Planet Unknown in a while, but we did play a few weeks ago, and that that's from Adam Apple, Adam's Apple Games, <laughs> and uh, that's one that was just on Kickstarter this year as well. So I'm very excited for that. Um, but I haven't I haven't played a few. There's just been this intake of games like crazy. So it's like I can't get back to the games like I wanna play again. There's just so many games that I want to play them all all the time. <laughs> I want to send you more games. Thank you. I will take the games and I will play the games. That's what I do. Um, oh, and if you're not familiar with Adam's Apple games, uh, he also did Sword Crafters. This is where you're actually building up a sword in a like set collection type game. And it's like so much fun. I always have so much fun playing this game. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, that's also a great one to check out. Um <laughs> Play one game, get two more. Play one game, get two more. <laughs> Sword Crafters is great, yeah. The Dino War and Ride game seems like an interesting as a world builder. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I really like the Dinosaur Island world that they've created. Um, so I definitely want to try um, the other one. There's Dinosaur World, uh, I think, also in the same setting. Also, I, I, I like Brian Lewis as a designer. I mean, I really like Dinosaur Island. Uh, I think it's really great. Um, that, I think, was my game of the year in 2018, 17? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when I played it. <laughs> It's all blur at this point. It was it was definitely if it wasn't my game of the year, it was definitely close to my game of the year. Um, so I I really have I really have some love for that game. And the roll and, the roar and write is actually packs a punch in a short time, so I like it. Dinos are not Michael's favorite, which is so sad because I love Dino theme. I think that's fun. I don't, I don't even love themes in general, but dinosaurs I think are fun. But I don't hate them. <laughs> Scott says, Jeff can't stop giggling when he's playing sword crafters. It's true. It's true. I played with Jeff and he, he was giggling the whole time. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I showed this game to several people and everybody's always enjoyed it, so... <laughs> You could change zombies to dinos in a zombie game. Yes, that would be much, much, much better. Like if you did, if you did like zombie land or zombicide into dino side, that would be great. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd play. I would play that game. <laughs> I don't ask for much. <laughs> Jeez. We played Cartographer Heroes on the live stream on Wednesday, and everybody could play along, and it was so much fun. I love playing games where everybody can join in, and and you know. 
um, give us opinions and stuff on what to do or, you know, play along with rolling rights and everything like that. So I'm definitely going to be looking for more of the opportunities to do something like that so the chat can join in and uh, play along. It's going to, so as mu I'm going to do as much as possible, especially with some of these games that are three plus players. I'm going to, I'm going to recruit Shrey and Derek to a live stream and we're going to play Monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know it yet. Don't tell them. They're going to play it though. <laughs> um, see, I'd much rather play Zombie Island or Zombie Theme Park. No, 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 no. Matt, you are wrong. <laughs> you are just wrong. No, okay. I understand that people like zombie games. I am not one of those people. It's all too scary for me. It's too scary. Too scary. I don't like it. <laughs> all right, all right. What else? What else? Okay. I'm almost done with my list. We played a game of Marco Polo 2. I taught Jeremy Howard how to play. And I dragged Shrey along and uh, Derek Derek along for the ride. Derek has played before, I think. Shrey had not played, but I, I went through the rules. Jeremy had not played a Marco Polo game ever. So I was like, Shrey, please play. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and so uh, I was excited to play Marco Polo 2 again because it's now available on Board Game Arena. And I wanted to see how it was implemented. It's really, really cool. It's so cool. I, I love the Marco Polo games. The more I play them, the more I love them. Which is funny because the first time I played Marco Polo, I'm like, this won't last. I didn't like it at all. Like, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't like it. But as, as you play it more and more and more, it's like it's become a staple. I really, really love this game. And, um, you know, I, I like Marco Polo. I like Marco Polo with the expansion a little bit better. And I think I even like Marco Polo 2 even a little bit better. But maybe it's because it's still new. I guess you'll have to come back and ask me in like three years. <laughs> Um, Marco. Nothing. Nothing. Oh. There. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Michael loved Marco Polo 2 from the start, but he didn't have anything to compare it to. Have you even played Marco Polo 1? <laughs> the Voyages Voyage of Marco Polo, Michael? I don't even know if you played the first one. I can't remember if we played it or not. <laughs> Derek likes Marco Polo 2 more. I like it more because of the ever-changing market. I think it does something really nice with that. Um, and so nothing is static and everything, you know, it's always changing. I think it's really cool. <laughs> if Michael can't remember if he's played there. I don't think, I don't think Michael has played uh, the Voyage Voyages of Marco Polo. So I don't think he can safely say that he's he likes the second one more than the first one when he can't compare it <laughs> no here's her worst game ever what hospital zombie monsters spiders <laughs> yeah that would be really really that would be like a let's burn this game before even playing it kind of game no and the final game I played and talked about in my blog is Alma Mater. It showed up on uh, TTS, and it's fantastic, and I got to play it. And I, I just, there's so much going on in that game, and, I, and it, it's such a wonderful brain burner. I think it's going to definitely be up there in, in, in uh, some of my favorite games of the year, for sure. It's going to be in my top ten, I think, of game of the year. Um and uh, that's, it's so good. If you like games, if you like Euro games, if you like really thinky games, it's really thinky. I mean, you are literally considering everything at all times. So if you don't like brain burners, I mean, I don't, it's not as heavy as like a Lacerda game, but it's like, you will want to take your time and plan out what you're doing. Because if you don't, you will suddenly realize, oh, whoops. <laughs> what game? Alma Mater. Alma Mater. Ah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so Alma Mater, fantastic. I'm so glad we got to play it. I'm so glad it's on TDS. I want to play it more and more and more and more and more. More and more and more. And then I have these stacks of games right here that I need to show off right now. So with that being said, these are the games that showed up since last Friday. You're not going to believe it. It's like... I have a stack of eight. I have a stack of... Ten. And I have a stack of five. Right here. And I might be missing some. I don't even know. It's hard to keep track. I know, Shrey. That's 23. That, that's math is hard. It's like, it's like a very large number. Well... As Michael demonstrated, this one just came today. So, I have to remember not to show this next week in my next week's large stack of games. Because I have so many more coming. Scribbleton. It looks like... Okay, yeah, it's by Zach um, Highwiller. He goes to Dice Tower Con, and we've been friends for a while. Um, but it's a roll and write, so I'm very excited. I always want to try any new roll and write. And if people can play along, which I don't know yet, but if people can play along, that'll be even better. Then we could show it on the live stream. So, um, this is fairly good. I thought it was going to be in prototype form, but it looks pretty much, uh, it's in shrink wrap, so it looks pretty done. So, that's good. That's good. This one just came The Shining. Shrey says Scribbleton is a roll and write game. The BGG description literally says it can be played easily over Zoom. Other conference software, hopefully it's good. Yeah, hopefully it's good. Spiel comes to me. Yes, Spiel comes to me. So this is The Shining. So this one, what does it say? How many players is this? Where is the player count? Gee whiz. One or more. One or more. So The Shining, Escape from the Overlook Hotel game. Avoid Falling Prey. To Jack, I haven't seen the movie, so I'm not good with theme. This one is a theme that is beyond me. This is way too scary for me. This is like way. This is like nightmare central game. But I think we're gonna play this on the live stream. It, it says one or more players. So, oh, it's designed by Jay and Senfeng. Okay, cool. That's cool. I like them. So difficulty is a three out of three. The difficulty is three out of three, so we're going to have a really hard time, so I'm going to enlist the chat to help as we play through this. I think it's a one and done game, but I'm not sure. It says 17 plus because it's really scary. I'm really scared to play this. Like, I'm already opening it. I was trying to see. I don't know much about it. The op games. Warner Brothers. Yeah, this, this, this... This will be a good one to run on the stream. So we'll have to do that before the month is up because it is October and this is really scary. So what else do I got? I want the other Shining. Is there another Shining game? I know there's Friday the 13th. Steph, Steph, Prospera Hall. I want the other Shining. I don't know what the other Shining is. Oh, he wants that shiny game. He put a link in the chat. I don't know. I'll have to go and, like, see about that. I don't even know. It's linked. It's at Target. Okay. This is Grey Eminence. It requires three players. It looks really... I mean, it doesn't look like a game I could play on the stream, so... I don't know when this will get played. I don't really know much about it at all. All right. So that, <laughs> Gray Eminence. Don't know, it's all these things. Okay, this one showed up too. Hello, hello, hello. I, I can't do it where you can see my, I can't do it so I can see my face. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I don't know. Mega Mouth. 
I don't know much about this game, but it requires four plus players. And it looks like we're going to be like... Using these things to make our mouth look really big. This is a new one uh, out at Target from Big G Creative. It looks like a, like a typical party game. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I During COVID, I don't know how many people are going to be buying a game called Mega Mouth, but we'll see. We'll see. Mega Mouth is not on BGG yet because it just came out this week. They always like to like have an embargo until the last possible second, which I'm not really sure why. This game is super heavy. It's small, but it's heavy. It's also a prototype. It's called The Shadow Network. This, this is on Kickstarter next week, and I'm very excited to try it out. Um, uh, Talon Strikes Studios, and they did the vinyl, which I really enjoy. So I'm, I'm very excited to play that, hopefully get that to the table this weekend, and I definitely want to show it on the live stream during their Kickstarter, if possible. Um, it says... Uh, one to four players, 75 to 90 minutes. So it's definitely going to be a longer game. Uh, so it probably has a, a little bit more in-depth rules. Um, Michael's like, yay! <laughs> I could hear, I could hear him whining upstairs. Even though he's not really whining, but I can hear it, you know? You know, like... <laughs> Same designer as Alpha. Which one? <laughs> Who doesn't want to play games with gimmick components? Well, it's true. It's true. It's true. Um, the word is dense. Thank you. That is a better word. It's it's dense. It's a dense. <laughs> it's a dense game. Dense. Well, <laughs> the one with the wolf cover. Yeah, Alpha. Alpha is a game with a wolf cover. Yes, I know. I know the game. The Alpha. Yes, I never understand why publishers don't want information out before the release. Having no information is the number one reason for me completely ignoring a game. I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree with you. Don't you want people talking about your game before the release? I don't know. I. I. I mean, I would. <laughs> I don't care for gimmicks. No, I know you don't care for gimmicks. Some of the games we played with gimmicks recently have been okay, though. Like, uh, Mind Deeper. It was really cute. It was a gimmick, though. I mean, it totally is cute. Um, even the little Monster Dentist game was gimmick. is a gimmick, but it's cute. It's cute. It's cute. Oh, So that one's gonna be fun. Shadow Network will be fun. I'm very, very excited for this fantastic game. Flotilla! Flotilla! This came out last year. It got tons of amazing reviews. I finally played it uh, online on TTS this year because you need three players to play it, which is a problem. But um, I will enlist some of my online friends <laughs> to play again so I can take some pretty pictures and uh, build up my, my little flotilla. This game is so cool. I really, really love the, the hand management in this game. It's like, you know, when do you switch over to the the sky side versus the seaside? It's, yeah. It's fun. It's, like, going to be fun. <laughs> See? Shrey and, Shrey and Deck are like, yeah, woo! <laughs> they like the game, too. So they, they'll be happy to play it again, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, help me out get it off the review shelf because... <laughs> I requested this. I requested this, and I'm very excited. I'm very excited that I actually have a copy. This this one will not be leaving the collection because I I think it's a keeper. I think this is one of the best games that I've learned this year. I still have more in the stack over here. It's like never-ending supply of games. This one is now available on the BGG store, which is where I got it. Fear bra brand. Fear a bend. <laughs> The new Friedman Freeze game. Uh, I'm always very skeptical of Friedman Freeze games because most of them I just don't enjoy as much as I want to enjoy. Um, <laughs> and goodbye. Gotta, gotta, gotta play some Deadly Doodles. <laughs> um, so we'll see. We'll see. I, uh, 
I'm skeptical, but I'm always hopeful because that's what I am with every, any game I haven't played. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it's my next favorite game. Like every game I play that's new, I'm just like, it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best. <laughs> and then it's not. And then I'm sad. But I still, I still am hopeful. Oh, it, it is on. It is. Do you have the right letters in the right places? <laughs> It should be on BGG. I know it is. I think it's like on the BGG homepage. Like there's like a whole article on it. So, oh, BGG search isn't working. Finishing time. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she has filled the screen before. Yes, this is true. <laughs> it's good. It's going to end up that way. Well, so I have a stack of 10 in front. This is just the stack of eight. This, this is the... Okay, out of all the games in the 23 games of stack of games that I'm showing you today, I love Flotilla. The, the one I'm about to show you is the one I am most excited for. Which is saying a lot. I am hopeful. This is going to be the game of the year. I say that about everything, but really, what's going to be the game of the year? Probably Pandemic Legacy Season 0, but, you know, I'm hopeful that every game will be the game of the year. There we go. The prefer. Oh my goodness! Aeon's End Outcast! More Aeon's End. We all want it. Okay, maybe not everybody, but Michael and I certainly want it all. Um, and there's new expansions, and there's new everything. I don't know where the expansions went. I actually didn't add them to the stack, so that was my mistake. Uh, so that means there's really like 25 new games that came in this week. Aeon's End Outcast, I'm very excited to play it through. It's a new... Um, I think it's a campaign level type game where you play through like four games or something and I definitely want to play some of them or one of them on the live stream coming up hopefully Wednesday. I think that's what I have it mapped out. I tried to map out a few weeks in advance but we'll see. Hey thank you for following this on the little rainbow. That's awesome. I need to put it up for a longer time. <laughs> so I, did, I missed out who was following but thank you for following. That's awesome. Uh, so, and the Outcast, look for the live stream coming up soon and review it all this stuff because we want to be playing that really soon. I know I gotta move these games out of the way because it's all, like, in my way. And I have to get to the next stack of games. It's like, it's already been an hour of streaming and I haven't even, like, gotten through all the games that I've gotten in front of me here. It's, like, absolutely insane insane but in a good way this is a good insane this is well maybe not to everybody but it's a good insane for me it's a good insane for me i got the real copy of ugly christmas sweaters play one game get two more ugly christmas sweaters is a trick-taking game i helped out when it was on kickstarter and uh i really enjoyed it so we played that a few times uh last year and um, now it's a real game to play. I'm excited. I really like it. We'll be playing that during Christmas anyway. Seastead! Oh my goodness! Yes! So this is um, a two-player game. And it takes place in the flotilla world. It doesn't really have flotilla mechanics at all. But it's a really nice... Um, like, almost an area control type of game, but not really. You're trying to complete orders, collect resources, complete orders, and do, do this, this, and that. Um, and so there's a lot of different things. It's very thinky. It's very good. Uh, it's fantastic two-player game. Um, I, I play, I uh, the designer asked me to play a demo of it on TTS, so I got to learn it a few months ago. Really loved it. And um, I, I, I later played... Um, again, and I really loved it still. And so now that it's finally in my hands, it's like awesome. I'm very excited. Uh, I think Michael will really like it. I, I think uh, this will definitely be a keeper. I love the small box. That's really cool. Yeah, this one packs a punch. If you're looking for two player games, I would definitely, definitely recommend this one. Seastead. Seastead. Yeah. Hi, Charlotte. Welcome. Next up, next up is a game I'm hoping we can play with the chat because it's three plus players. It's called 
king of movies. I love talking about movies. Now's your chance to step in my shoes, Leonard uh, Malton. And so, um, three to six players. I, I don't really know what kind of game it is, but I think... So it's, it's on the back of the box it says, using a film's title as inspiration, players create fake movie reviews in the style of legendary critic uh, Leonard Malton. Earn points by tricking others into thinking yours is the real Malton review. Oh my god, it's like, I'm not good at creative writing like this. I don't know. Uh, this This will be interesting. I don't... I don't know if we could play it on the stream, but I suppose, um, Michael's like, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Michael's really skeptical of this one. I, I don't know. I don't know about this one. That's for sure. Uh, so we'll see. Oh, I also got another one from Mondo Games that is not in the stack that should be in the stack that I, uh, will review shortly. It's called, um, Disney, Dis, no, yes, Disney's Shadowed Kingdom. It's a two-player luck game, I guess. I don't know. It's a cooperative game where you're trying to find the wishes, the wish cards, but there's also shadow cards. So if you find shadow, shadow cards, the shadow track will move up. It's, like, fairly weird. Uh, it's a weird sort of dark Disney themed game um and I I don't really have a whole lot of good things to say about it so I guess I'll just leave it at that it's a cute box the art is great gameplay needs a lot of work in my opinion I think they they rushed it out too fast and it didn't really I think there's a lot of like problems with it um but you know, it, it's a two-player game, and there's not much control in the Disney Disney Shadow Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, it was disappointing. Yeah. Sadly, because the box is really compelling, and it's like, wow, this looks really different for a Disney game. Um, actually, I'm going to get it, because I want to show it. Because it, it looks it looks fairly cool. I mean, I really like the look of this game in general. But in the end, the, the result is the game wasn't much fun. Um, so because of that, you know, the king of movies, we'll see. I was thinking it was going to be like a movie trivia type game, which I think I would be more interested in a movie a trivia type game than a... Um, you know, make your own creative <laughs> description, uh, review of a game, of a movie. So, yeah, it does make me skeptical. Go you, Charlotte. You figured it out. I don't know what you figured out, but that's awesome. Also from the three-player shelf is Scapegoat. So all these games, I need, like, to figure out how to, like, I need to, like, figure out if they're on TTS or somewhere else where I can play, because right now I can't play them. They are card-driven games that require hidden information, so you can't really play them over Zoom and stuff like that, so it makes it really hard to review these types of games when I don't have three players to play. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't make me less excited to play them. I want to play them, and... You know, I want to play everything and see how it is. So it's just, it might just take a while before these get a review because I just, um, I don't have the people. I don't have the people. And another one also from Indie is a three plus player game. It's called Magic Money. This looks so stinking cute. I love all these little critters on the box. I think they look really cute. Um... Again, I, I, it's a card game, and you're probably going to be having... So, that's the thing. I need to, like, read the rules, or have Michael read the rules, <laughs> and uh, see if it can be played with people online. And if we can get the chat involved, 
and maybe play a hand. If, if everything's open information, it's one thing, but if it's not open information, it makes it much harder to to run games like this for three, three or more players. Uh, but I want to try and see if some of these games can because I want people to be involved. Magic money. Yep. Yeah, the three-player shelf is now, like, incredibly large. So let me just push this aside. Let me... These are the stacks I've already showed you. Move my, my mic up. Push this and the computer. Oh, my goodness. Trying to do everything. Okay, now it's out of the way. Now it's actually out of the way. <laughs> let me get to my last stack, everybody. Jeez, there's, like, a thousand games. Yeah, you don't even know. You don't even know. Okay, we got Divi Dice. Divi Dice. Super excited. Super excited. Um, oops. The sound increased a lot. Okay. Let me see if I can. Uh, I don't want the because my computer's really loud, and that's what that's that's what you're that's what you're hearing is uh, the computer if it's the the noise. Okay. All right, so Divi Dice. Divi Dice is a, I don't know, it's like almost like a Bush of Luck kind of dice rolling game. You're you're rolling dice, trying to make sets of dice to fill these little cards that you have, and the game ends once one player has nine cards, and you're trying to fill them to get points and do all these other things. So cards will score points based on other cards and what you've done and. It, it works pretty well. I liked it. Uh, we Michael and I did already play it, uh, so that review will be coming. So I still prefer Gon Chunk Lover, always. Um, not Gons, but Doppled. Doppled. There is a significant first player disadvantage, this says Michael. Fairly unsurmountable. Inconceivable. <laughs> Let me grab from the top of the stack. Oh, God. Sherlock Files. I love, love, love these games. These games are so much fun. Um, I, I'm thinking we... So we have one left to play out of uh, this box. So maybe we'll do it on the live stream if people are interested. It would be a spoiler. But in the box, there are three cases. And... Um, I think they are just so much fun. Uh, every time we play, we're like, we're going to do great. We're going to do great. And then we end up getting middle of the road. I'm like, how don't we do better? We always say what we know. Wow, CK Mom, thanks for following. That's awesome. <laughs> I love my little rainbow dude. He's just like so cute. Um, so, yeah, I uh, really, really love Sh Sherlock Files or the Sherlock games in general. Uh, the Sherlock games are from GDM Games, and Indy is, they're individual games from GDM Games, but Indy put them in a three into a box and selling it as, wow, CK Mom just subscribed! That's amazing! Thank you so much! That's awesome. I, it means, it means a lot to me. I, all I do on this channel is talk about games and how much I love games. <laughs> Cause I do, I do, That's a, and we play games, and we and we and we, we make fun of ourselves. <laughs> That's... Saw it, woo. Okay, so not every time. Um. <laughs> so I would definitely recommend checking out the Sherlock Files. I've had nothing but great times playing them. Um, some of the unlocks are not always fun, but I always usually enjoy playing the unlock games. The exit games are usually a miserable disappointment for me, so those ones I don't look forward to playing as much. Uh, and um, But as far as crime-solving games, I love Chronicles of Crime and Detective, and The Sherlock Files is, is super quick and super fun in comparison to those two, uh, those games as well. And I love all those games as well, the crime-solving ones. So... If you like that kind of thing, it packs a punch in just an hour. And there's three cases in that box. What time is the stream on Sunday? Provided Michael joins me for the stream, I might have to figure out to play um, some solo games if he's not gonna if he's not gonna be available. But um, the the stream on Sunday, we usually start at five. That's usually five central. So I think I'll be there. Cool. 
I'm going to I'm going to MacGyver everything to work. So it will all be back on track and everything's going to we're going to have our overhead camera, we're going to have everything. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, so then I got this huge box of games, like like a huge box of games from um, AEG. And uh, so I've been like, some of them I've played already, which is good, and some of them I'm just happy to have in the collection, and, and some of them I'm just excited to check out. And this one, I was so excited to check out because uh, who doesn't love chocolate? Truffle shuffle, truffle shuffle. And this is their new, this is their, a new card game, and Michael and I played it, and it was awesome. It was great. It was way better than I thought it would be. <laughs> I didn't have high high expectations, but I do like the theme. I love the you know the, the delicious chocolate, and so this will be really easy to show on the stream, and it goes perfectly with point salad. Um, I do think I like point salad still a little bit more. Uh, we played this the other day. Mike, I taught Mike, or Michael read the rules or whatever. I don't know. We played it. It's a very easy game. It's a very easy set collection um, game, which I learned a few weeks ago on TTS. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So I'm glad it's in the collection. Um, this is definitely... I see, I see why people love it. I don't think it's like a game of the year or anything. I think it's a fairly good card game. So I'll probably end up keeping that one. And this one, I want to play a few more times. I think it works probably best with two players, but I I think with four players, it would get just, like, too out of control. It would be chaos. I mean, you're just trying to collect these different sets with cards, and uh, with more with fewer players, you, you get more opportunity to, to take more cards and actually collect sets. So I think it's... Um, I think they're, they're both solid card games, and... Uh, Happy to have them in the collection. We have a new expansion for Cat Lady called Box of Treats. He's so cute. I love him. Oh, Cat Lady expansion. Uh, I played Cat Lady last year. Uh, it's still on my shelf, so I have to go find it. And then I get to play this expansion with it and tell you all about it. And I'm sure that this will... Maybe I can have, like, an AEG night. Maybe I can, like, write to somebody at AEG be like, back me on Kickstarter at the, the publisher tier. We'll play all your games. Because <laughs> I just, I mean, I just got this box of games. And I'm just like, oh, my God, all these games. And I want I want to feature them. I do. So we'll, we'll have to, um, you know, play all these games one night. I'm just This one I'm going to, I'm going to actually play at the end of the stream. Calico! There is a solo mode, and so I'm going to demonstrate the solo game for Calico. I got this cool little promo, too. And so what, what's cool about uh, the solo mode is that there's, like, different um, scenarios that you can play. And so I'll just play scenario one and see how well I do. And um, if you have any interest in Calico, I'm going to teach you all about it. So after the stream is done, I'm going to basically shut down for half a second and come back and... Uh, <laughs> Play this. I have to like clear all these games too. There's like stacks of games right here. Next up, the the new Mariposas. Uh, it's a game I'm looking forward to checking out. Um, curious. It is a race game, sort of. I mean, it's played over a number of rounds, but you're trying to like race up the board and race back down the board and trying to complete all these different like objectives and stuff so I'm curious to see how it goes um I I do like the butterfly theme I think it's pretty cool that it's so thematic because all these are like the migration of this monarch butterfly so you learn something new every day mariposas okay we're getting there we're getting there there's three more games in the stack three more we have Tiny Towns. Tiny Towns. Tiny Towns. Fun, yeah, fun game. I, I like it. I'm happy to play this more. I'm glad that they sent it to me because it's a game I'll play more. And there's a new expansion. I didn't get the new expansion, but, you know, maybe if, um, maybe in the next the AEG box that shows up. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's a great game. Tiny Towns. Everybody's played it already, so I don't need to talk about that. New game that I just got from Indie. Another one is Kodama Forest. 
Now, this is weird because it says three to six players. So you're going to need three to six players. Now, the, the thing is, it's a polyomino game. I'm very excited to try this one. But why do we need three to six players? Maybe somebody out there knows why. Oh, it says, on the box, it says, optional rules for solo, two-player competitive, and two-player cooperative games. Hey, Michael, that means we get to play two-player co-op polyomino leg game. <laughs> he goes, yay. <"Yeah."> no. <laughs> uh, then it's not three to six. But, so, what, what, I think what, so when publishers do the three to six, it's probably recommended for three to six players, but then in the rules... You know, there's also these optional plays. And so there's a rule for solo games. So if uh, Michael doesn't want to play, then I can do a solo game eventually on the live stream. And, uh, yeah. All right. Last, the last game in the stack, guys. Which is certainly not the least because we're all, and by we all, I mean at least me and probably Derek are very, very excited to play, oh, Rome and Roll. Wow, this looks like a very in-depth roll and write game. I mean, like, crazy. I opened it, I'm like, oh, there's a solo mode, because it's Turksy, right? So I'm like, oh, there's going to be a solo mode. So I opened it up, maybe I could play it on the live stream. Maybe. And it's like a 20-something page rule book, and it's wicked thick, and I'm like, Oh my god, what kind of rule book? This is like a thousand rules in here. I'm like, oh my god, it's very intimidating. It's very intimidating. Um, so, I, I'm i a little bit scared, but I also am very excited because and we also have the character expansion, so there's more rules for when I, uh, I'm ready for that. But I just want to show this rule book because it's like, it's like, it's like heavy. It's like, this is no joke. There's like, Tons and tons of pages. I don't know. So there's a lot going on. But I love the chunky dice in this game. Like, I love them. They are season dice. If you've played the game Seasons, they are the chunky season dice. And I love those dice. So that's awesome. That makes me happy. So all these awesome games. I'm very excited to play. I need to figure out how to live stream from my phone, which I thought I could just hit the go live button and, it, you know, and then have that going on. But no, no, nothing is easy. Nothing can be easy. <laughs> so provided I get everything up and running with all my cameras and everything for a Sunday playthrough, play live. We're going to be playing Princess Bride, the adventure book card game. We're going to be playing Plankton Rising and... Some other thematic October game. Right here I wrote down Final Hour, but we'd have to reread re the rules for that one. So that one might, might be a little bit more in-depth than we're looking for. So maybe we could play some other games. I have like a stack of games. Or maybe we can read the rules to um, the Shining game right here. Um, Friday the 13th, if we can get players involved. We have Crimson Creek over there. We have Sophagus. Uh, I don't know. It's a mummy game. I don't know. Uh, and then we have, I have Sweet Stack. But Michael hasn't played Sweet Stack. But it's it's an easy, really, really cute, really, really good game. I really like Sweet Stack. So hopefully we can play Sweet Stack sometime, Michael. Um, yeah. It might be a bit long if we were to play Final Hour. So we can find something a little bit quicker and play Final Hour another time. Um, Wednesday, it looks like I wrote down Furnace and Aeons and Outcast. So hopefully we get those played. And then oh, a week from Sunday, the 18th, it looks like I wrote down Honey Buzz and Deadly Doodles. And, you know, whatever else. I There's, there's a lot of games, so I want to play a bunch I want to play that weekend and that the few first days of that week is, is Essen. So I want to try and stream a lot more if possible, like every night or every day or something to show off as many games as I can because that's, you know, I want to be supportive of all the publishers and I want to just try and play as much as I can. Yes, Outcast. I knew Charlotte would be very excited. I definitely want to play that for sure. Um, Deadly Doodles. Ha, 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 ha. 
Deadly Doodles 2. We'll play a new board so everybody can play along with the, the new board and new rules. And so that will be fun. I, I like trying to find games that um, that people can play along with. So if you have any suggestions on what we should play, I'm all ears. Well, I could also read if you type it. That's cool, too. <laughs> um, oh, butthead's left. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And maybe, maybe on the 17th, Michael and I will play through Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Just all of it. Just sit, you know, we'll start really early, like 7 a.m. and just go, like, all day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, Pathfinder. I know. We're going to do Pathfinder. So it's going to be Pathfinder November. I even just got, um, well, I, I have a contact with, with Paizo and, uh. So they they're gonna send me some of the new files, but there's but there's no new Pathfinder Adventure card games that are coming out, which is sad. I was hoping for an expansion for the core set, but I guess maybe next year. I don't know. I don't know much. I don't know much. But you know, if you're in the if you're in the mood for a calendar, this is not Kickstarter. Kickstarter right now. So be sure to check that out. I'm very excited. I'm doing, uh, you know, everybody's really helping out and uh, supporting this channel and my photography and my blog and just supporting me in general. And I just, I'm so like honored and, you know, it's, it's been such a cool experience with the Kickstarter. Um, and uh, yeah, Michael just put in a link to the Kickstarter. Thank you, Michael. So check that out. I know Charlotte backed at the gamer level, so we're going to be playing a game night. So whatever Charlotte wants to play, we're going to play. And <laughs> she's like, we're going to play Love Letter for like three hours. I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and Derek still is pledged at the $60 level. So maybe Derek will make me play some crazy games too. I don't know. <laughs> Um, who else? There were some other people who did, uh, the gamer, the gamer pledge. Uh, I know my friend Eric Martin, no, not the Eric Martin, a different Eric Martin. He wants to play Nippon, so I'll have to uh, read up on the rules to Nippon, and we'll play that on, um, Board Game Arena. And I, I know my friend Dan and Jeff, they pledged at $150, and they're gonna make torture me with games that I may or may not want to be playing for TT, uh, for the 18xx games but we'll see we'll see I'm willing to play anything you know I'm just happy people are supportive and you know want to see me succeed so I'll play whatever you want to play <laughs> Scott if you back at $60 I will play Camp Grizzly with you there you go there you go otherwise I'm not playing Camp Grizzly <laughs> Might have to break out OCTGN to play Pathfinder online with Charlotte. 18xx, boo. 18xx, step. Boo. <laughs> Dune. Are we playing Dune? Well, I'm sure Michael would play Dune with us if we, if you wanted to play Dune. We could, we could get whoever you want involved and they could all, we could all play Dune. I know you need at least six players for that I think I don't know how to play so you'd have to teach me <laughs> pronounced octagon oh that makes sense um okay so I think that like which dude I don't know which dude I I would think the new one but uh maybe not maybe the old dude I don't know I don't know jeez yeah Drink. I was hoping she'd want to play Aeon Zed. Because I would sit there and play Aeon Zed for hours. That would be good. Probably can't get it in with three hours. Yeah, you're probably right. That is a longer game. But I, I haven't played. I've just seen it being played. So it might be able to be played in three hours. But also... If it runs over a little bit, that's fine, too. We'll see. I just don't want to... I, I basically, I set a time cap so that, you know, like, 
you know, you don't expect me playing Twilight Imperium for eight hours in, 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 in a night. You know what I mean? So it's more that I'm just trying to, like, make sure that, you know, I don't get myself wrapped up with, like, hours of a game. Um, like, hours and hours and hours of games. Uh, like, Twilight Imperium, for example. I didn't want to say, like, pick pick a few games and then we'll play. Like, I needed to set some sort of cap. But, you know, I know you. <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. It's all good. Advanced Civilization. Yeah, exactly. I'm not playing Advanced Civilization without a time cap. Like... <laughs> If you, Michael, if you back at $150, then I'll play Advanced Sim. There you go. Hope you like negotiation backstabbing. Yeah, I'm really not good at that stuff, but I'm, I'm willing to give anything a shot. So you're admitting you'll play it with a time cap. Yeah. Noted. Whatever. I look forward to making a contribution. <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> it's peak. <laughs> peak. <laughs> it's long. It is long. That's what she said. I literally just said that, yeah. <laughs> thanks, is that what thanks. She said? thanks, but thanks, Derek. Drink. I don't have a hydrate. Mm. Those are the peanuts. No, it's right there on the floor behind oh, you. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, hydrate. <laughs> 12 hours till you might not finish. Seriously. Yeah. I love how Michael's head just appeared. <laughs> oh, when I did this? No, when you're peeking through the, the wall. <laughs> you fear. can't you can't see the wall, but there is actually a wall right there. <laughs> it's so good. No. <laughs> Just, hello? Hello. 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 Oh my goodness. So I want I want to show off Calico, but I have all these games, so you need to move the, all these games, Michael. Since you're here, be useful. I lift heavy objects. Yeah, like these heavy games. I'm going to set it up. You need to take your laptop around and show everybody. I don't know how to do that without ruining everything. So you unplug your laptop and you lift it up from the I know, but it's plugged in. It's plugged into it. the mic. I'm going to lose all this. I can carry it. That's fine. I just All right, I can. I could try. I can uh, try. Well, I mean, your micro, your laptop has a microphone. Yeah, I know. It's just going to It'll kill change any... Your con, it'll change your configuration. We'll do it some other day. I could try it. We'll do it some other day. I mean, I want to try it, but it's already been 90 minutes. We'll <laughs> do it some other day. A 90-minute stream. I got to just randomly try it on my phone again. And... You could just create a video, and then when it comes time, you can cut to the video, and then... Hop back to your stream. Oh, uh, that I should do that. Smart. I sometimes have ideas. I don't know how to but, do that, but, but I know it's possible to do that. That's what I do. I play board games, and I know things. <laughs> that's what I do. I miss Game of Thrones so much. Tyrion's my favorite. Yeah. Ow. No, for... For those of you who don't know, that's like Tyrion's quote. I drink and, and I, I know, know things. That, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for cat-themed games to play on the kitten cam. Oh, yeah, there's there's a bunch of cat games. So Cat Lady, Calico. Um, I'm sure there are more. Sparkle Kitty. <laughs> Not that I suggest playing Sparkle Kitty, but you can. Oh, there's that oatmeal thing. Change the title on the, sc on the stream. Yeah. No, the title already says Calico, no. A-E-G, flat out. No, the title is bad. What title? The title of your stream. Oh. It's wrong. Dang it. All right. Yeah. I didn't hit the update button. Well, I tried telling you, but... You I'll, have to, I'll have to change it uh, after the fact, because I don't think I can go in and manually change it at the moment. But let me see. 
I didn't understand. No, can't. I already know. Oh. No, Edit stream info. Let me see. I might be able to. I might no. be able to. Nope. Done. I, I don't know. I know this because... Yeah. It should say... Did I lose it? I don't know if I, I lost it. I think you it. lost it. See? Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. I don't know. Did everybody lose me for a second? I can't tell. I don't know. I can't tell. I think you should go back to your stream. I, I am on my stream. Uh, it's changed now. Okay. Well, but can you still see me? No, I'm good. Like a millisecond. Okay. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to go back and change the stuff's hodgepodge. Anyway, after. Because um, I tried to do it from my phone, and I had it all typed in and everything, and then it was like, no, can't do it. And then I was already like 10 minutes late, so I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get this going. I gotta get it going. Don't anger the computer. Be nice with the computer. Be nice with it. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Right, let's see. Alright, so. <laughs> you gotta go sit over here. I'm going, so, yeah, that's a good idea if Michael had. I'm going to film a tour of, uh, of all the games that I have and all the areas, and I will put it into this, <laughs> I'll put it, I'll somehow link it in to here. Um, things are falling, things are happening. Let's see. Catlantis looks adorable, but not much depth. Actually, Catlantis was fairly good. It was fairly good for what um, for what it was. I I really enjoyed it, and I have a really cool Catlantis shirt, and the box is like holographic awesomeness. So I would actually recommend Catlantis to somebody looking for a cat game. Um, yeah, I think Calico is probably my favorite cat game out there at the moment. So. Oh, frickin' Isle of Cats. Yeah, Isle of Cats. That's, that, that is my favorite cat game. Calico is close by, though. What are you doing? Do you want to play Calico with me? I've got to go back to editing. I know. You got to, he's got, like, work to do. <laughs> so I'm going to play Calico. I'm going to cut the screen and come back and, uh. Why do you have to cut the screen and come back? So, so I can have a, a home, a home screen for Calico. Like I do with any other game uh, we do. So, and then it will give me an ending for the Steph's HodgePodge video where I can... Ta-da! Ta-da! Ta all my stuff. I got all this stuff. All this stuff. Put it, get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. What are you doing? I'm shake, reading. You're shaking the... Shake, shake, it, shake it. Stop! <laughs> People are complaining about you doing that. <laughs> I add humor. It's true. It's true. <laughs> All right, look Reskin all zombie games with cats. That's right. I agree. Or dinosaurs. Last cat on earth. Or Game of Thrones or game anything. Of, no, we're talking about zombie games. I know, but why can't you retheme it to Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings? Because you don't have a problem playing Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. You have a problem playing zombie games. Right. That's why you should retheme zombie games to be any other theme that I like. Right. Oh, but I already told you that you should do that. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back. Where's my ending? It says big. Uh, right here.